वेट 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 यू कैन यू कैन जस्ट टॉक लिटिल बिट अबाउट व्हाट यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट एंड देन यू कैन कंटिन्यू विद द टॉपिक ओके सो बेसिकली लास्ट टाइम वी हैड आर वेल व्हेन टिकवा हैड अ प्रेजेंटेशन वी टचड अपॉन द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ डायनामाइजेशन आई थिंक टिकवा यू आस्क्ड Hanuman mentioned the desilience potency in Materia Medica Pura in arsenic, and then you wanted somebody to calculate how much arsenic is present in the desilience. So I thought, why not? I would do it. And actually, the result was quite incredible. It turns out we have so in the desilience potency we have zero, 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 like sixty zeros behind the comma, and then we have a one, and that's how much arsenic we have. And because I um. went to medicine for a while and to get into the university we had to learn to calculate how many atoms are present in a, a sample so I actually went in to calculate how many much atoms we have in a desilience potency in homeopathy and it turns out everybody's right we don't have any atoms um but this this doesn't matter the atoms don't matter and hanuman told us that a long long time ago and this is what i will talk about today basically yeah sounds good Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I will also mention how we make the desilient venomization, how it's described in the Materia Medica Pura, how it's described in the organ on 5th edition, 6th edition, how this happens, how much substance we have, what does Hanuman say about how our substances work, and all of that. So, I guess we can maybe begin now. High five. Yeah. High five. Woo! Let's get into it. Mm, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I need to start the presentation now. I didn't practice this bit. Oh, here it is the button. Okay, so we see the title. Nothing new. I've already said this. So most often we describe when people ask us how do we make the remedies? When we're in college, we say we potentize remedies by dilutions and succussions. I don't know about you but I've never thought about what this actually means. I just imagined we dilute, we shake a bit and then we have a remedy. It works, maybe it doesn't. You know, who knows. I haven't much thought about it until I met you guys and I started to study the organ and I've discovered many interesting things. So, let's get into it. What what books we have and what do they say? So, we've already mentioned the desilience potency. It actually doesn't have to do with decimal. it has to do with a decillion which is a different number and hanuman mentions this decillion attenuation in materia medica pura he says in the introduction for proving of arsenic that the decillion attenuation is enough to suffice for a proper cure in cases where we need the arsenic and i've divided this instruction on of remedy <clears throat> preparation in six parts to make it a bit easier to digest and first he describes how to triturate the sub substance so he takes one grain of white arsenic which we nowadays call in modern chemistry arsenic oxide and Do you need to fix this... your screen we're still on page 1 oh no but i i, I no that's not good because i am it's okay it's okay no. what screen are we actually me. up to are we on you number 3 You don't see me switching pages now? No. No. No, you're still on the first page. But I'm not in my screen. Okay, okay you can just click screen you 3. Can... It says I'm screen sharing. No, the it's not uh, changing here. Hey, otherwise you uh, just uh, don't um, uh, Uh, on uh, turn on that uh, show you can just click the slides but i am clicking them can i share the screen again exiting and then sharing the screen again maybe it will do yeah maybe let me yes, see yes now it's changing the slides now it's there we the go screen. there we go but now it's not in full screen but i guess that doesn't matter no it's okay we can still read it yeah okay we already went through this So this do you see now the instructions okay in italic do you see them mm-hmm. yes 
Yep. Okay. Got it. We're good oh, now. Okay. 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 Whew. So basically, um, what Hahnemann does now, he says how to start preparing the salient potency of arsenicum album, which we call arsenic oxide in modern chemistry. So he basically describes, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, a one hour process in which he triturates the arsenic, which basically means he takes the mortar and the pestle, pestle. I don't know. Yes, mortar and pestle. Yeah, that's the word, great. Um, and he takes one gray of white arsenic and he takes 33 grains of powdered milk sugar. This is a medium substance. So it's just there like a piece of paper for color to use it, to use it metaphorically. So he takes the grain and then he rubs it, he mixes it, right? Yes. For quite some time. Doesn't matter how much, for a few minutes, if you want to know the exact amount of time you can read later on. So he mixes it, then he adds another 33 grains, he mixes it, and then he adds another 33 grains. And why he does this is because he wants to get a homogeneous mixture, which in chemistry means he wants to get a mixture that no matter what part, so if you have a mixture weighing 100 grams and you take one gram of it, you will always have the same amount of substance that is inside this mixture. In this case, that's arsenic oxide. So he wants to mix it thoroughly. So when he takes in the next part, one grain of this, mixture containing 100 grains that he always, no matter what he does, how he takes it, he always gets one hundredth part of uniformly potentized arsenic. So this is actually already one C potency. I've actually um, started calculating this in grams already. So by the end we have six and a half grams of this mixture. And this contains, if we calculate all of this, you see the equation here. You can, you can see, I mean, the numbers are quite clear. We have 1% of arsenic, which is the same as Hahnemann says, one part hundredth of a grain. And it's uniformly potentized, so it's homogenous. And then we go to part two. Now he takes one grain of the mixture we made. This mixture contained 100 grains because we added one grain of arsenic and 99 grains of powdered milk sugar. So the first mixture we made has 100 grains. Of this mixture, we take one grain and mix it with another 99 grains. And then Hahnemann says, now we have a mixture that contain one part of 10,000th of a grain of arsenic. You can see here, I did a calculation. So we had 1% arsenic. This is another way to say this, it's 0 0.01 arsenic. Then we added more powdered milk sugar. And now we have one part 10,000 of a grain of arsenic. I don't know if mathematics are clear to you. Yes. I hope they are. Yeah? Yes. I mean, it's, I will, I will, I will repeat this. It's quite repetitive and I will, I will repeat it in many different ways. So I think by the time we're done, you will get a very clear picture of what happens ratio wise, mathematically and all of that. Actually here, wait, you cannot see it well. Hey, yeah. So here um, I've expressed this through exponents. It's a thing in mathematics. You've probably all learned about it in school. So in the first, in the first mixture, we had this number. This was the arsenic. And then when we add 99 parts, we have this amount of arsenic. So this is the pattern that starts emerging when we measure, when we count, when we sum the amount of arsenic and powdered milk sugar. So we go to part three of how we make the decillions. He takes of this last mixture, we take again one grain. And as we said, this one grain contains 10 thousandths of a grain of arsenic. And again, for three hours, 
So, so far we have nine hours of making the potency. And again, with 99 grains of milk sugar, we make a million fold degree of potency. So again, we have the equations. One is done through grains, which is a measure Hahnemann uses. He didn't use grams for some reason. I guess it's because it's more practical. In Europe, we mostly use grains. We don't use cups and such measurements. I don't know how it is in India, but anyway. Um, here I made a calculation in red of how many grams we have and how, the how much the final mixture has grams. So to express this in percentage, in this third part, we have 0.0001% arsenic. When we put this in exponents, we have 10 to the minus sixth potency. And this is another way of saying a million fold degree of potency. And this is the term Hahnemann uses. So it makes sense, I think. I've denoted this here. So now in the third part, we have a millionth fold degree of potency, Hahnemann says. In the fourth part, he takes one grain of this again and dissolves it in one drops of diluted alcohol. So because again, we're making, we're diluting it again. So one grain with 100 drops, again, it's a hundred times more diluted. So whereas it's before it was a million fold potency, 10 to the exponent of minus six. Now, when we want to know how much arsenic this mixture has, it actually has um, 10 to the minus eight exponent because we've diluted it even further. And then again, <laughs> he says, now we have a liquid solution. And if we want to reach the decillionth, it has to go through 26 files. Uh. With each file, you take one drop, add 99 drops. In the next file, from the previous file, you take one drop, dilute it with 99 drops. And this goes on and on and on. So before I've said we have, we have how much substance of arsenic. We had 10 to the exponent of minus eight. This is our first file. And then we do it, do it 26 more times. So I don't want to <laughs> repeat all of this that is written, but if you think about it and try it for yourself, it's actually very simple math. So we started with a file that had 10 to the minus eight. We have 26 files. With each file, it gets dilute to 10 to the exponent of, min of minus two. If you, if you, what's the word I'm looking for? Pomnoji thing. Times, oh yeah. So if you do 26 times two, you get, uh, how much? 52, yeah. You get 52 plus eight, it's 60. So by the time we get to the 26th file, how much parts of arsenic are present? That was the question Tikva asked me basically, how we got to this. We get how much arsenic? By the time we get to 26th file, it's 10 on the exponent minus 60. So if you want to express that in grams, it's zero comma zero 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 sixty zeros sixty zeros yeah including the zero before the comma so you say zero comma and then fifty nine more zeros or zero point fifty nine more zeros yeah exactly that's how you would say it in proper English in in English I mean in Croatian maybe you say comma when you're making a math problem like that yes. Yes, different countries are different. Yeah. So basically, um, this is why it's called the decillionth fold degree of potentization because apparently in British English, I went to search the word in the dictionary, the decillion is a number equal to one followed by 60 zeros. That's right. Good job. There's more. <laughs> I know, but still good job to this point. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it was quite fun to do. Now, for me, comes the most fun part. Okay. And this is how many atoms are present. So we mentioned <laughs> we triturate in three parts. So for three hours, we triturate. And then we take one grain from the powder we've made, and we add it to, what, 100 drops of alcohol? Yeah. 
So how much atoms, I asked myself, are by this point, how much atoms do we have of arsenic? And it turns out we have a lot of them. To be exact, we have, I don't even know how to express this num number. So 5.2 millions, billions, billions, millions of billions. <laughs> I don't know, maybe Tikva knows <laughs> how to pronounce it. 5.2 5. times 10 to the 14th? Is that what yeah, I guess that's a, I guess that's an easy way to say it. Yeah. I cannot even imagine that number. Um, how I came to this calculation is basically we um, take the how many grams of arsenic we have in this mixture. And then, so we have a mass, and this mass pertains is constituted by all of the atoms of arsenic. And then we divide this number by the weight of an atom of arsenic. And that's how we get this number. And, and that like, weight, is that calculating the mole? Is that what that's called? Uh, not really. Um, okay. If you want to know, <laughs> if you really want to know. So when you look at the periodic system and you look at arson, so every actually element in the periodic system, um, it has a little number so it has a number which denotes um, at, at what, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like so there's the, the, the weight, the molecular Exactly, weight. that's the weight. It's, so been one a thousand, weight. it's been like how many years since I've done this math? Like a long time ago. We used, <laughs> they didn't let us use calculators, put it that way. It was not allowed to use calculators to do this really? math. Uh-huh. That's how old I am. Damn. We were yeah. allowed to use calculators. I don't think. Yeah. You are older than well. calculators. Well, the calculators <laughs> existed, but they were forbidden in school because Why? you had to do this all by hand. It's I mean, I guess it's better for your brain, but come on. <laughs> you know. But anyway, there are two numbers. So one number denotes okay. how many um, electrons or protons we have in the element. And then the other one is um, how much more weight does this element have than an atom of hy hydrogen? So I've calculated that. And then I've, I've taken the mass of substance and divided it by this number. And that's how we get the number of atoms, basically. So moving on. Um, oh, yeah. So. If we follow the files of the medicine, we come to the conclusion that by the eighth file, we only have five atoms, if succussed properly. Because if you don't succuss it properly, then maybe you'll have even less. Because why do we succuss? We succuss it to get an even mixture. This is why we do it, not to release, I mean, also to release a magical power, but we wouldn't be able to release this magical power if we didn't succuss it properly. Um, Hahnemann later talks, later talks about this in um, Organon 6th edition, I think. Well, some aphorism will get to it. Um, but yeah, many people are always shocked to learn this, especially the more scientific um, minded people. And then they, you know, yell, oh no, but that, that, that means it cannot work because there are no atoms to make it work. And, Hahnemann knew a long time ago, this is not what matters. This is not what makes our medicines work. It's the dynamical power, yeah? Mm -hmm. So yeah. The, uh, the magical part. The magical, <laughs> yeah, the magic, <laughs> <laughs> the fairy dust. <laughs> the fairy dust, yeah. Fairy, the woo, the fairy, fairy dust. dust, right? Yeah, potent fairy dust. So yeah, um, now we leave Materia Medica Pura and we won't mention it again. We move on to the organon. And here is what Hahnemann says in the aphorism 269 of the sixth edition. This remarkable alteration in the properties of natural bodies is achieved through medical action on their smallest particles by trituration and succussion. While these particles are separated from not another, from one another, by means of an intervening, a different substance that is either dry or, or liquid. So in case of crude substance, this is the powdered milk sugar. And in case of liquids, this is the mixture of alcohol and water. Mm -hmm. So I was quite intrigued um, to find actually Hahnemann mentioning 
the particles and um, it helped me imagine how this process comes to be. So he acknowledges the particles, but later on um, in chronic diseases, I think we will see that um, he tells us very clearly the particles are not what do the job. It's the power we release by dividing these particles. So um, the process of dynamization, he also um, describes in the fifth edition of the Organon. It's pretty much all the same. Um, and if we do the math, here we see that the decillionth and the 30th potency is basically one and the same. Why? Because the decillionth is 10 to the exponent of minus 60 and C just denotes 100. So two zeros times, so two times 30, it's the 60. So it's actually really the same. Um, but what I found interesting, because um, one Indian homeopath long time ago, uh, he instructed me to actually look at the fifth edition of the Organon because he thinks the sixth edition is corrupted for some reason. Um, so I also have the fifth edition and uh, here in the footnote of aphorism 270, actually Hahnemann says that, um, so he basically, um, what's the word I'm looking for? So he kind of makes fun of the homeopaths of his time that claimed by carrying the medicinal fluid around them while visiting the patients, obviously the fluid would shake a bit and they said, oh, it doesn't matter that this happens. And he said, oh yes, it does matter. And he, I could actually make the 30th dilution, the power of the 30th dilution by not even diluting it 30 times. I could actually do it by shaking it a lot for half an hour. So he said, oh, you fools, you, know, you don't even know what you're working with. And if we want to be good and smart and amazing, in my opinion, we should know how we are making this, how this happens, what is going on. Mm -hmm. So um, here in the fifth edition, he basically says um, how to do this um, process in crude substances. It's the same as in Materia Medica Pura, basically. So we will move on. Mm. I've already mentioned this, how can the 30th and the cilians be the same? It's just mathematical, doesn't matter, moving on. So um, there's, in this um, aphorism I've just talked about, in the footnote, the editor actually added um, some of Hahnemann's thoughts from the um, chronic diseases, uh, edition two, part five. And what I believe, really loved about this is how the editor wanted us to know that what Hahnemann said about shaking the substance a lot um, to attain the 30th potency, actually his thought, and thank God, obviously Hahnemann thought about the art for all of his life and perfected his thinking and the method more and more. So um, what he says in chronic diseases, our master Hahnemann about um, dilutions, he says that what we're working with, we cannot call homeopathic dilutions. They're not dilutions, they're dynamizations. Why? He says, if we that dilutions only pertains to what is sapid, so pertaining to taste and color. So if mm -hmm. we dilute substances that are salty, the more that we dilute them, no matter how much we succuss them, they will not get saltier. They will yeah. not. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> not, so we need to get away from this material kind of thinking. If we take a color substance, if we just dilute it, it will get less and less in color, but this doesn't matter. And he also knows that succussion of liquid substance is nothing less. So it's the same thing as um, triturating them. So dilutions are not dynamizations. With dynamizations, we awaken the medical properties that lie dormant, as he puts it nicely, mm -hmm. um, in natural bodies during their crude state. So we cannot call them dilutions, they're dynamizations. That's so, right. Yeah. And he says to potentize the preparations even higher, to quote, in order to awaken and develop still farther the medicinal properties that, st that still lie latent in it, we must dilute them, but this is only to allow the trituration and su succussion to pen penetrate more deeply and release the more subtle parts. So when I imagine it, it's like, okay, with succussions, you sort of, as he mentions in the sixth edition aphorism 269, you triturate to sort of break up the particles with the medium substance. And then when you dilute and succuss, you have less particles to work with. They're further apart and you succuss them and you sort of release that dynamical power. 
I don't know what power it is. Maybe it's electromagnetic. Maybe it's strong atomic power. I don't know which one of the four forces um, in physics, physics it is. Um, but there are very clear, Hahnemann presents very clear reasoning why we do all of this. There's a reason why we do all of this and we must understand how we do it in order to um, judge how strong our potencies are and how to adjust it to our patients, basically. Oh, and one more thing um, said in a different way. So why the editor added this? Because Hahnemann said, oh, I could have just shaken it for half an hour and without diluting it, I could have made it stronger. Yes, but um, the power cannot be released properly because it's a more of a concentrated substance when it's not diluted enough. And this is actually, we will see later on why he got to LMs because with LMs, um, we have more diluting right away and they are more gentle because how I imagine it from his writings, the power can be more released. It's not so, it's not a narrow window, if that makes sense. So there are less aggravations and because particle has, have, particles have more space to move, we get all of their effects and to quote, um, they can hit all of the spots of the disease. Um, oh yeah, and uh, the most important part, in my opinion, is the footnote of Averism 11 of the sixth edition of the Organon, when, where he defines what is actually dynamic. So we all know, I hope we know, he compares the dynamic power, for example, to the moon um, rotating around the Earth's orbit. So this is not done by mechanical arrangements, he says. The sea tides, the ebbs, the magnets, the piece of iron being attracted to a pole of a magnet. We've all learned this in school. So this is done at a distance. They don't even need to touch. There's no little man that like takes the blocks and then he makes them get closer. No, they do this just by pure dynamic action. The same when we get sick, it's just, you know. Although sometimes I wonder, every time I read about the measles, you know, nowadays we know about viruses and bacteria. So I'm like, hmm. But now we know it happens by this. So is it dynamic? Yeah. And then there's more things that are written by Hahnemann that help explain that. For example, he talks about um, cholera in the Ganges River being okay. picked up and like held in the clothing and the beards and stuff like that of people and being carried from place to place. He also mentions mm -hmm. that when somebody writes a letter in one yeah. town and they're infected with something, that it can actually infect somebody in another town through the opening of mail. So he says things about contagion. Uh, so he really kind of like sits, you know, midway between Pasteur and uh, what's his name, Beauchamp. I don't so know it's, it's, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, halfway, Hahnemann takes like a, a mid stance between germ theory and terrain theory. Oh. Okay. Which makes yeah. a lot of sense because you have to have both. You have to have the germ and you have to have the terrain that's vulnerable to the germ. Exactly, 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 exactly. Because, I mean, we've seen it with asymptomatic, um, asymptomatic corona, right? So there's this tiny particle that infects you, but you won't necessarily bring on the symptoms, right? So Right, because you particle. have to have the body has to be prepared and... Yeah. in just a way to be actually sickened. Yeah, and Hahnemann does talk about this position as well. I, I haven't mm -hmm. touched about the subject at all, but um, we do well, have- that's this what I was thing. talking about, you know, also, you know, it's kind of like midway between terrain and germ theory, because yeah. there's a little bit of both. Yeah, um, so. and you've mentioned the letter. I think also, um, I've remembered it differently. Um, maybe it's a different writing, but basically like, if you open a letter with bad news and you get sick, you know, where's the germ that made you um, sick from the news, right? Well, that would probably be uh, the bad news itself. Yeah, exactly. Would, because we know that the immune system um, is affected by bad things, you know, bad thoughts and, and yeah. worries and stress. We know these things. So he also says the dynamic power makes us disgusted by seeing something disgusting. There's no emetic in our stomach that makes us, you know, it's just the sight itself. Uh -huh. And also with lifting right. our arms. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
Yeah, watching people barf can help people barf. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. So, um, what does he say next? Um, the smallest dose of a medicine dynamized in the best manner. Oh, I love this part. He says, wherein, after committed calculation, as I have done today, only so little material can be found that its smallness cannot be thought of or grasped, even by the mass mathematical brain. Gives out in the appropriate disease case more curative energy by far than large doses of the same medical substance. Such great actions could never be achieved by the raw medical medicinal substance, even when it is taken in larger dose. So Indeed. Hahnemann knew. So Hahnemann knew very well that the numbers are small and that there are no particles. I always get an impression like our critics think we're not aware of the fact that Hahnemann wasn't aware of the fact, but he was very well aware. He was just so, um, in my mind, so progressed that they couldn't even you know, grasp it or they didn't want to. I don't know, but um, all of that talk about um, the particles doesn't matter that much. Um, and yeah, so the LMs, to finish off with those, um, actually two more slides. But yeah, the LMs, um, the newest potency Hahnemann gave us after long, long experimentations are the LMs. He describes the um, process in the aphorism 270. LM denotes 50,000. So L in um, old Roman, Latin, whatever. Mm -hmm. Latin, Friday. yeah. Yeah, Latin, it denotes 50 and M is 1,000. So Combine LM, you get 50,000. Why this is so? Because um, one grain filtrated for three hours. So to the one millionth attenuation, we put in 500 drops and we take that drop and add it to 100 drops. So the result is, so 500 times 100, um, it's 50,000. And to guess this, we give not a thousand, this is a typo. We give a hundred strong succussions, moist in the globules, and we get an LM. And I also did the math for this. Um, so the first LM, so the LM1 will have um, da -da 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 -da, 10 to the exponent of minus eight part of substance. Actually, a bit less, but somewhere around that um, order. So this is actually more similar to like, uh, wait, that would be like a three, four C. So we would consider it quite a low, the, um, not dilution, sorry. Quite a low- Centesimal scale. Yeah. Centesimal scale C. Yeah, yeah, we would consider it um, a four C. So a, a low, low um, dynamization. I don't want to use the word dilution because it's not. So we would consider it a low dynamization, but, um, I think we need to get away from this line of thinking. What the dilution doesn't, so the amount of substance doesn't matter. In this case, it is not the same because we had more substance to dilute it with. We have had the 500 drops and not 100 drops. And then in the footnote of this aphorism, he says and explains what I was trying to say right now. He says, through meticulous experiments, I was convinced um, that the earlier proportion of the dilution medicine and the medium, that's one to 100, it's too narrowly limited to develop the powers of the medicinal substance properly and to a high degree by means of a large number of succussions, unless one uses a great force. This method gives medicine that, especially in the high degrees of dynamization, almost instantaneously, but with stormy and dangerous intensity, he's talking about the C scale, impinge on patients, especially delicate ones, without bringing about an enduring gentle counteracting of the counteraction of the life principles. The new method, on the other hand, gives medicine, if well chosen, of course, that curatively touches all sick points. And more is said in the footnote um, itself that I've just mentioned. So he basically says, if we use this scale of dilution, we will release all of the medicinal power present latently in the crude substance. And by releasing it in this way, we will bring most benefits to the patient. Actually, I feel like he's trying to say, this is the only proper way to bring relief to the patient. Because he does say, by using the C scale, he clearly says, we will get, we will, with this method, we will get medicines that um, impinge on the 
life principle of the patient with stormy and dangerous intensity. So this is not Hanuman, good. Hanuman mentioned here that uh, it touches all sick points. Many people yeah. believe that uh, uh, LM only for chronic disease, but it's a myth. No, he actually mentions in this footnote also um, that actually in acute, it's great to use. It can be used at very, very short interval, intervals, even he says, even the long-term acting remedies such as belladonna. I don't know exactly why this is, um, but you can look at the footnote itself. And here he clearly mentions that it can be used in acute very, very well. For and sure. We use and if it, you think I about it, there is no reason, there is no reason why it cannot be done. Not at all. There's absolutely, it's good for, it's a good all-purpose medicine. But I'm glad you everybody, everybody should be able to make this in case something happens with the homeopathic pharmacies at some point in the future, God forbid, everybody should be able to make an LM potency at home. Yes. And the best part is it's very easily done. So right. if you have 3C, actually, if you have 3C potencies of all the remedies, you can make an LM basically. I'm pretty Definitely. sure. Yes, you can. And yes. And I'm glad that both of you have mentioned this because my last, 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 my last slide, my last slide, well, there's one more, but that's just a picture, which is incredible, by the way. Um, but Hanuman actually also mentioned about the need to, as Tikva said, be able to self-produce our remedies, mm -hmm. to standardize and thoroughly understand why, in some cases, the low attenuation or a high attenuation didn't work. So Hahnemann was aware, and he denotes in chronic diseases, how many, it is frequent, frequently written that some found no effect from this high dilution, and some found no effect from low dilution. And he says this needs to be investigated. So we need to understand why this happened. And he says, what prevents us, the maker of medicine, which is, should always be ourselves, to add more succussions to the vials. So it doesn't work, why not succuss it more? If you know it will release more power, if you've ch properly chosen the remedies. So if you're conscientious and not lazy, you know, right. you a prescription. How did he say Tikva last time you said it? <laughs> right, yeah, it's not for the, oh gosh, I wrote it down in a booklet, it was so good. <laughs> about, it belongs to the lazy and the, uh, oh. I cannot remember the word. Yeah, I know, and I I wrote it down because it was so it's such a treat. It's so good. Well, it's so know. cheeky. I love it. I know. I'm in <laughs> such a hoot. Yeah, he is. But basically, he says, yeah. Yes. Okay. It can. I can only limit myself to the latter case, chronic disease spoiled by allopathy as the other situations cannot be arranged in tabular form for the weak and negligent, but must be left to the accuracy, the industry, and the intelligence of able men who are masters in their art. So really the art of homeopathy yeah. is really more pertains to the when to dose, how to dose, and the making yeah, of medicine yeah, yeah, yeah. than it does in creative case taking. I didn't understand that last part. Oh, the case taking and um, and you know that the homeopathy is very concrete in its scientific it is. development, and so whenever Hahnemann says the word art. I think about art as being when to dose, when to redose, how to make medicines, when to re-give those medicines, et cetera, et cetera, as opposed to people nowadays are saying homeopathy is an art because we need to be really artistic about our prescriptions, artistic about how we approach our patient, yeah, artistic yeah, yeah. about, you know, where are we going to go here in the yes. mind and there in the mind and that kind yes. of thing. And that's not where I think that Hahnemann intends the art to be. No, 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 no. It is very, very concrete. Yeah, definitely. Um, so he basically says, like, do your own remedies, understand what you're doing. Don't be weak and negligent. Don't be <laughs> stupid. You know, take some fucking effort and do it properly. <laughs> 
<laughs> for the sake of our, yeah, I mean, come on, you know. Uh, and the last slide, I want to show you something amazing. So basically, um, uh, this are. Oh, drops. cool, cool, yeah, cool, imagine. cool, cool. So this is scientific proof that saccations do make a difference. So this is this was actually um, the second most downloaded chemistry paper in the Nature Nature magazine of the year 2020. And what we see in these pictures and what the study attempted to do is they took um, I think six or five remedies. One wait, five Artesia, remedies. Artesia, sponge, echinacea. What's the other one? Alufa. Okay. Anyway, um, what they did is um, they had, so in total 15, I guess. Um, what is the word I'm looking for? So I guess they had like 15 vials. So okay, so she, many, this is dark yeah. field microscopy. Okay. Yeah, All I have right. no idea what, I have no idea what that is. I don't know what oh, I'm doing. Oh, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. And you know, Hannah Sholom, he's, she's, um, she's a homeopath in Toronto. She does dark field microscopy when Why? she, and to look at people's blood to see how well their treatments are progressing, which is Ooh, that's interesting. Amazing. Uh -huh. that's, really, that's really like yeah. um, cutting edge, yeah. Is that yeah, the she's doing, yeah, cutting edge. Yeah, cutting yeah, yeah, edge yeah. or bleeding edge, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is so cool. Okay, so you have dark scale, dark field microscopy. Oh, that's so much fun. What a cool picture. You have got to put this picture in the group. Yeah, I will. Um, okay. So basically the pictures show um, the differences in the samples of remedies um, and the differences how, how much time they've been succussed. So it obviously affects the, I don't know, what's the word to use, like the patterns of proteins or whatever. Like, I don't know, but um, it's very clear evidence that succussion does matter, you know, and um, that was kind of the point of this entire talk, like succussion matters. Dilution succussion matters. matters. Yeah. matters. Yeah. Succussion, succussion matters. Succussion lives matter. That's beautiful. Matter. <laughs> yeah. Succussion lives matter. <laughs> In our dark field microscopy, succussion yeah. lives matter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this. What a beautiful presentation. Thank you, Ivana. Thank you. You're welcome. I hope I've, um, I've said something new to you or refreshed some things, said something important and I don't know, inspired maybe. Yeah. It was definitely but, uh, interesting for me to make You surprised it. me. Oh. I was not expe expecting that you could do a, such a nice presentation. Oh, thanks. You had low expectations of me. <laughs> <laughs> I had high expectations. On the oh, contrary, yeah. I knew you were going to put together something this good. Oh, and I am, good job. Thank you. Um, and thank you and, for encouraging me, Tikva, because this was like, I've learned a lot by doing this. I like. Because I'm not the type to just like read the book, you know, it has to be like interactive for me. So I'm like, oh, I have to do this. And then like to do this, I have to read this. So like, it's easier for me to digest. Otherwise, I don't like reading. So this was very fun. Um, and I don't know, I hope one day we will all be making our remedies. It's not that hard. <laughs> Turns out. Yeah. yeah. So like yeah. any questions, things you would like to discuss, comments? I have a one doubt, uh, should I ask? I mean, yeah. Can we discuss? Um, Dr. Hanuman has said that uh, dispensing as dry doses is the weakest form of dispensing it. It yeah. should be in wet doses and all. But if we give a dry dose to the patient and we wish to repeat it, uh, then just succussing it, the dry dose, Will it cause the potency to increase if there is no wet, wetness in that risk? If I just take a bottle um, of pills, which is medicated by some, say, arsenic 30, and I just give a stroke, will the potency increase? I mean, yeah. of course, uh, our pharmacy book says it doesn't because it needs um, to be in a solution of alcohol. But how so, else would you, wait, you would, of course, you need to first make it liquid. 
Yes, yes, right? You cannot take a remedy bottle full of dry pills and shake it and increase the potency. It will not increase, right? Oh. No, and that's <laughs> part of the reason why Hahnemann says that when you're out and about seeing your patients, that you should mm -hmm. keep your stuff in dry pellet form exactly. so it does not increase during the movement of, let's say, your horse or the carriage. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the point of everything mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. is like um, we raise potency in a liquid state by shaking it because you know, like try to envision it like you have those mm, particles some kind of power and it's just like sort of it gets more and more you add power to it you add the friction with dry pills they're too crude they're too crude nothing can happen that's why he used the mortar and the pestle so he shook them to release like ah you know to do that to the particles and yeah. by just if he just took um, arsenic and he just shook it like shook a great like a piece of arsenic oxide if he just like did this in the air like nothing would happen i think that's the same what would happen if you took, just took the pills and shook them in the air so you have to, have to make them wet but i would suggest i mean i'm not i'm not even like fully practicing but i think the point like what we should take from this presentation and what hahnemann said is use the lms use the liquids he found it, he, he knows the best, he found it to be the best. You know, don't you, at least don't use the dry dose. Yeah, you can never repeat a dry dose twice. No, and don't even use the dry dose. Why would you no, use don't it? Even it's so use easy. It. It's yeah, so easy to make it liquid. It. Yeah, it just takes a moment. And it's, it's really not that hard. Yeah. Right. I haven't dry dosed for probably 15, 17 years. That's amazing. That's very progressed. Well, as soon as I got my hands on, uh, you know, the sixth edition of the Organon and some other materials, I'm like, well, yeah. Hahnemann says not to dry dose. Why are people still dry dosing? And I'm so glad that like you've repeated it to us again and again, Tikva, because when you just read it, like you don't take it to say like, yeah, but what does he know? He who invented it, like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I know better. <laughs> Everybody says dry doses are cool. I just use the dry dose. Like he, he knows it best. You know, yeah. I went to college for three years, which is admittedly not a lot, but you know, and everybody said use the dry dose and like he did it for, he invented it. He practiced so much for decades, you know, like we should listen to what he says. Yeah. He, he really right. knows it. He spent his life developing this method right. for us to use. We should take yeah. seriously what he says. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, no, I know better. Hi, Sharam. Mute. I see your microphone. Is yeah, you're on mute. mute, girl. Yeah, I have a question. If we are giving dry doses to a patient, he's no. getting improved. He's getting improved. But now uh, I feel like uh, we should go to the um, uh, like a liquid dose, okay. so like uh, your dilution. Then so we can suckers them and increase. We can turn to the dry dose, the uh, th uh, that liquid doses, water doses. We can move. Yeah, by all logic. I mean, I just know what I what I read in the organon. I think Tikva and Sanjay can tell you better because they have more experience. Um, but I can tell by my experience treating myself, um, there's a huge difference when you take a liquid dose for me. Okay. So every time we have to suck us, uh, like to increase the potency. Every time you get it, the next time you get it, you suck us. So yeah. like, because in the dry dose, we are taking regular uh, 200 potency repeatedly, but we are improving, but we need, uh, like now I just uh, come to understand that uh, water doses are more beneficial because uh, these days everybody is going to, uh, towards the uh, water doses. So I feel like I should uh, move to the water doses now. So can uh, can I shift from the dry dose to the water doses? Yes. Oh. And how to make the water dose from like Pulsar 200 and how to make the water dose from it? Like we have the pollute, we have the globules. Um. And how to make we I'm have done. numerous videos of this on YouTube. Yeah, guys. Okay. 
but you can put in 10 tablespoons of water, 12 tablespoons of water, 20 tablespoons of water, a half a liter of water. You can do it in any amount of quantity of dilution that you need that's going to be what you think is going to be best for your patient. And there are so many ways, actually. Yeah. Well, yeah and no. Okay. Because, you know, we always have to keep in mind by diluting and succussing, um, we make a higher power. But why and how? So I think we should imagine in our minds, okay, we have this remedy, it contains this energy. So how much do I have to spread it out? You're spreading it out by diluting it. And then by succussing it, you're like, I, I don't know the English, English word. Mm, like you're charging it. That's how I envision it. You're sort of charging it, you know? Um, so how much do you need to do this? So, I mean, it's, but Hahnemann learned all of this by experience. Um, and there's actually an aphorism. Da -da -da. So in aphorism 270, he says how to get this, um, how to get this, uh, how to get this higher power. So he says, if you take one millionth power their attenuation, which is basically 3C, he then says how to get an LM from that. So he says, take the one grain, put it in 500 drops of one part brandy wine and four parts distilled water, and then take this single drop and mix it with good wine spirit. Now, so if you I remember how much a grain is, remember, we went over this a couple Yeah, of so a grain is, if you take the powder, I don't think people will have the powder, but yeah, if you have the powder, great. And this is 0 0.065 grams. So you need a good scale. Um, but I think for the future, because what, what I've always hated as a student in homeopathy is everything is very up in the air. You have to be very intuitive. You know, um, there are no concrete steps. And if we follow Hahnemann's instructions, there is a standardization. So in conventional medicine, there is no, oh, do like just wing it. No, like there is, you know, they know exactly how much of a substance they're using. So I think we should as well. So in each case, you can say, oh, I've attained this cure and this intensity of disease by a substance, by a remedy, by a dynamization I've prepared in this and this way. This is why Hahnemann um, was able to make it so progress and to perfect it because he knew exactly what he was doing. If we just like sort of, oh, just add a bit of water, just shake it a bit. You don't even know what you're doing. Like know how much times you've shaken it. He, when he was um, talking about the, the salience attenuation, he knew and he says in the organ on, or the chronic diseases, I don't know. I shouldn't know, but I don't. He says, by my experience, I know two shakes are enough. No more needed. You know, so we, we should be serious about that, in my opinion. I mean, I don't know nothing. <laughs> I've never made a remedy, but um, I think we should be serious about it. So yeah, try to follow the organon. All of the instructions are here. I didn't make this presentation from my butt. You know, I just took the books and, you know, it all says here. We made the remedy in a pharmacy. Uh, yeah, oh. Bible. What? We made the remedies in our pharmacy laboratory. Exactly. Like and you can save so much money as well. And it's better for the patients. Like, you can be so self-reliant. And, and I have save a lot of money and know exactly what you're doing and have more experience. You can do provings. You know, like, I think it's the way to go. And I have a question. That I know two ways of diluting, like, uh, water dosing the remedy. There is okay. one method, but there is one method when you put uh, like few uh, few globules in a glass of water, you let it dissolve and then you shake it like 10 times. This will increase the potency to like you have taken the 30 potency by succussing it for the 10 times you are increasing it to 31. Then you take that uh, one spoon from that liquid, right? You're getting my um, point? Like uh, dissolving I, I the- I think Tikva can- um... Maybe reply to that better because she has more experience, but the, the point of everything. So why Hahnemann says C, this is 
his old method. So C is from fifth edition of the organon. Why he calls it a C is because with every new dilution, um, he takes the original substance and does the ratio of one to 99. Yes. Yeah. So it's 100. This yes. is why it's a C. So yes. from, to get one C, to get two C from one C, you just need to take uh, something that has been raised to 100th power and mix it with yeah. additional 99 parts and triturate it well. He says exactly for um, how many hours and how. So there are no easy ways. I, I think um, this line of thinking would again fall for the weekend negligence. So what should I do in order to get a potency in an easy way that has the power of this? Sorry? I'm not clear about these two. There are another method when you take one spoon from that solution and mix it in a half cup of water and mix it like 10 times and take one drop, uh, one spoon from the cup. So this is like two cup method. There, there is another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not, um, I know, I'm I think, okay. yeah, I think he mentions it in some book, but maybe Tikva and Sanjay know better. I don't. Well, when we're making a preparation, a dilution with our LM potency, we have our dilution bottle and we take a portion of that dilution bottle, you know, like a teaspoon, and we put it into another quantity of water. And then we take one spoonful as the dose from that quantity of water. And we could also do that with a C potency when needed. And the wow. quantity of dilution depends on the effect you want it to have on the patient because that can be done in eight tablespoons, 10 tablespoons, 20 tablespoons. He gives various factors of what, what amount of water we want to dilute one pellet in. We're using one poppy seed, poppy seed size pellet and diluting it in a specific quantity of water. And then we are taking, depending on if we're using a C potency in water, or if we're using an LM potency, that depends on whether or not we put it into a separate cup. Yeah. But where does he say that? Because I'm looking at aphorism 270 and he just says how to prepare the LM1 globules. But where does he say how to use those globules? It's actually a good question. Okay, off the top of my head, Okay, Sanjay, do you have that one on top of the, on the top of your head about how did I? Oh, Siva Kumran. Hello, Dr. Siva Kumran. Gary, got it. Where, where, what, what? Good night, he, put, he put it in the in the chat box. Yeah, yeah I see. How to use Ellen potencies. It's so simple. Okay, but which simple. aphorism is it? Yeah, what's the reference, sir? <laughs> Because anybody can say any information, but what's, what's the reference? Hello. Hello. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, as Tico said, it's uh, correct. Uh, we have to take uh, one tablespoon from uh, the stock solution. No, we have to really take. Okay. Uh, we have to mix with another uh, 100 okay. ml of uh, water. Then we have to give 10 stairs. Then we have to give one teaspoon. And 248. Yes, ma'am, exactly. It's in 248 in the foot, okay? And and it goes into the footnote as well. For this purpose, we potentize anew the medicinal solution with perhaps eight, 10, 12 succussions from which we give the patient one or increasingly several teaspoon doses in long lasting diseases daily or every second day in acute diseases every two to six hours and in very urgent cases every hour or oftener. But when we go to the footnote made in 40, 30, 20, 15 or eight tablespoons of water with the addition of some alcohol or that piece of charcoal that mystery, the mysterious piece of charcoal yeah. suspended. Okay, so the solution of the meta, medicinal globule, and it is rarely necessary to use more than one globule of a thoroughly potentized medicine in a large quantity of water 
can be obviated by making a solution in only seven to eight tablespoons of water. And after thorough succussions of the vial, take from it one tablespoon and put it in a glass of water containing about seven to eight spoonfuls. This stirred thoroughly and then given as a dose to the patient. Okay, that is aphorism. Okay, on my aphorism 248, it then gives me um, footnote 134. So wait, Tikva, now you just read 249? No, this is 248 with um, a footnote. There's a footnote on my 248 to go down oh. to the bottom of the page. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah about the quantities. And then when, we, when we're dealing with a C potency, we go back to the chronic diseases for the directions in that. So this is different. This is only LM potency and mm -hmm. water dilution of C potency is in the chronic diseases in the end. And we do have a video on that. It was recently done. Okay. And that's where it says here that when there are patients that are so sensitive that a third or fourth glass may be prepared as necessary. Mm. Where now, in chronic diseases does he say this? In the back, there's... Um, Like there are instructions for the C scale, you're saying? Yes, the instructions for C scale okay. are in antisporic medicines concerning the technical part of homeopathy in the preface. And we recently had this video, if you want to watch it on a video. Yeah. What's the name? So, what the name is probably making the C, liquid C potency or? I think that video wasn't properly named, but I would have to look, but I could easily, some of the, you know, Sanjay, sometimes we need to rename the videos, and I think I've asked for this a couple of times, because I, I rename, uh, renamed that, uh, yeah. You renamed this one? Yeah. What are those in centesimal scale potencies? Is that the one? Yeah. I mean, it should be, be. that makes is sense. It like, is it like a month old? Three months old. Hmm, let's see, is that the right one? Time flies, you know? No. It should be like, what else? I think it's the Sunday session on dosing. Really? Yeah, in C potency. And vary the body parts. It's only one month old. Oh, Sunday study session on dosing That's options in C potency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Thus, the okay. physician will receive a greater action. Oh, I like that one. I don't even remember what. Suitable to the chronic right. patient and can cure him more okay. quickly. Yeah, so that's the instructions in C scale with both olefaction and water dosing. Because when the chronic diseases came out, we are no longer dry dosing. When we get to this book, dry dosing is over. Okay. So uh, basically the preface, preface, how do, anyway. Preface. Preface, <laughs> yeah, preface. The preface. Well, it is preface, it's before the face. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how, how I always imagined it to be. Well, because that's right, it's correct. But, you know, in English we say preface. Preface, yeah, it sounds like that's how it should be pronounced. Anyway, in the preface, so basically Kran, uh, Hahnemann says how to, those, yeah, in the preface of the very back of the book, it's after all the information that we've been going through in the group. Because you know, in the group, we've been going through little bits and pieces, like a page a yeah. day. Yeah. And okay. we are now into the medicines chapter. Uh -huh. And then at the very end, there is the second part with how to prepare technically the medicines and how to administer them.
<laughs> because it is indispensable to secure a cure of serious chronic disease. But Chikva, how do you um, comment the fact that um, Hahnemann's latest discovery were the LM? Shouldn't we then all be focusing on the LM scale? We should. We should all be uh, focusing on the LM scale, but there are people who live in places where they can't really access it. They don't know how to make That's it. True. They're, I mean, to even get people to use water dosing is like trying to like, you know, take apart their brain or something. It's like, that is so hard just to tell people switch to water, only use one pellet. But how many people are actually gonna put their faith in that one pellet in that, you know, 14 tablespoons of water and then take one sip. But yet this is what we need to do. And it, it is, it's sufficient. It mm -hmm. really is sufficient.